Haxorus is a pretty overlooked dragon Pokemon. That looks pretty sweet. While it has an insane base 147 attack stat, other than that, it's generally kinda lacking. But Haxorus does not care. This thing is one of the greatest Dragon Dance users that allows it to sweep with the extra speed, and not much wants to take an attack after the boost. It's one of the few Pokemon that can take advantage of priority first impression, and has a ton of coverage options in Earthquake, Poison Jab, Close Combat, and Dragon Claw. It can also use its Mold Breaker ability to bypass opposing abilities like Levitate. You can use the Lumberry to set up in front of status, and while this thing is outclassed by the Power Creep, this thing can function as a really nice late game sweeper. There's not that many Pokemon that look as badass as Haxorus, but also have such a great shiny. So I'm in. I've always liked Haxorus a lot. It's got that base 147 attack, which is actually kind of crazy. And today, we're going to see what we can make this bad boy do. Today, I've got some really interesting battles, and this first match is going up against a very interesting and honestly pretty powerful team. Real quickly though, before we get into it, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surely you've heard me talk about this before, but if you haven't had the scoop, I'll break it down for you. A VPN is a virtual private network that basically gives you internet superpowers. It masks what you do online and keeps you safe and private. Your information is in a way blurred out or encrypted so anyone trying to snoop on you won't know what you're doing. But it also lets you travel the world in just one click. With the tap of a finger, you can change your IP address to anywhere you want. If you live in the United States, you can hit just one button and you're surfing the internet in Australia. You may be thinking, but why? One of my favorite cases for this is accessing streaming options from other countries. United States Netflix has gotten boring, so all you gotta do is check out what Netflix has to offer in Japan or literally any other country. Also, if you ever come across any blocked content with Surfshark VPN, they can't stop you. Just a quick change of the old IP and you've got access to anything. The best part about this entire thing is that with one Surfshark subscription allows unlimited devices. You can legit share an account with all your friends and pay less than a piece of gum for a more secure and private online life, plus all the fun that it offers. If you're not already convinced, you can use my code Hayden at checkout to get an extra three months for free. Just click my link in the description and let's go ahead and get back into the video. So my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Grimmsnarl. This buff bastard is the bane of my existence whenever I see this thing on a team preview. It's just, I know it's gonna be annoying. A lot of the time they're just gonna prankster up some screens, make everything bulkier than it should be. And I do at least decide to lead off with the scissor. I can put the pressure with the potential for a bullet punch. However, of course, Hey, Grimmsnarl is not afraid of anything, does just stay in, goes for that Reflect. I actually end up getting a critical hit, which knocks this thing down to like 3 HP, which is actually pretty amazing because this is going to put me in a spot where I can go right into Luxray, and the good part about you turning into this thing is I get my Flame Orb to activate immediately, so I already have that Guts boost, and also with this thing at low HP, I can pick it off of the Trailblaze, grab myself a nice little uh, speed boost, and then Luxray is all of a sudden zooming around. So. They actually decide to stay in, they go for the light screen there, and the Trailblaze is going to finish off the Grimmsnarl. So, at this point, I have Luxray with the speed boost, I've got the guts rolling, however, the bad news is they likely have the light clay, and so Reflect and Light Screen are probably going to stay up for way too long for Luxray to at least try to poke holes in the team like I want it to. So, while I do have this thing set up, they now decide to go into one of the scariest Pokemon to go up against, and that is the Sneasler. So, at this point, I know this thing's likely going to try to pull off some unburdened bullshit. I likely am faster currently, however, I, I figure it might go for something like a fake out with that normal gem boost, activate its unburdened, and then it's faster than me, and then close combat kills. So, what I decide to do is go into the uh, Gastrodon here. He actually ends up clicking the close combat, which does give them the defensive drops. However, that's going to then activate the white herb. So, most of the time, at least, playing around Sneasel, you know it's going to go for... Uh, some type of uh, item usage to get that unburdened. Now this thing is extremely fast and it's behind screens and I did not have the greatest team to be able to handle some top tier threats like a Sneasler. However, at least the one thing that I do know is that I can take one more attack with the Gastrodon. Turns out they actually go for the Acrobatic, gets the critical hit but doesn't pick us off as I fire off an Earth Power just to try to get some chip damage. Now, it doesn't do much but it's important to try to get that chip because on this team, I have a couple different forms of priority, and if I can uh, at least whittle this thing down, I can leave some room for Bullet Punch from Scizor, or even Fake Out from Ambipomp. So, they finish off my Gastrodon, which is wildly unfortunate, because that's kind of my best switch into a lot of the stuff. However, now I kind of have to go into the Scizor. So, big meaty claws, 
comes in here and I can go for that bullet punch. I, I don't care about your unburden. You are not gonna be faster than these hands, boy. However, the reflect does allow it to live a bullet punch. They then fire off an acrobatics in return. And then luckily I can actually just go for another bullet punch here. They don't wanna switch this thing out and not be able to have it unburdened later. And uh, that's gonna take care of the Sneasler. They also should have definitely clicked close combat. I don't know why in any scenario you click acrobatics there. However, uh, we were able to take it and Scizor is looking pretty nice. So. Now this draws in the Flygon. Now a lot of the time you see Flygon, it's going to be some type of Choice Scarf. And uh, I figure, I'm going to scout here. I'm going to leave Scizor in. I'm just going to go for the Bullet Punch here. It's going to do a lot to a Flygon. However, they actually decide to go ahead and commit the Terra. They're actually going to go for the Terra Steel, put the Axe on the head, and now this thing is looking great defensively against uh, the Choice Band Scizor. So, I at least do get the Bullet Punch off here for a little bit of chip damage, which doesn't do much. Uh, but then this allows it to go for the Flamethrower. We're working with a special attacking Flygon, and that's actually pretty interesting. I kind of figured that I was going to be able to, like, take an attack from this thing, um, but uh, the, I, I stayed in for the Bullet Punch because it kind of covers for a potential Dragon Dance there. Um, but uh, the Terra Steel is effectively used, and now down goes the Scizor. But at least now I get to switch into whatever I like. And while they go for that Flamethrower there, this leads me to believe... That uh, Haxorus should be in a spot here where if it's not Choice Scarf, I can go for the Terra Steel of my own and try to set up a Dragon Dance. And uh, Haxorus is definitely going to need this Dragon Dance if I want to make something happen. They actually end up switching out, which tells me that is definitely going to be a Choice Scarf special attacking Flygon, which goes crazy. Uh, but they're now going to go ahead and bring in the Meowskarada. So I go for the Terra just to cover again for the fact that uh, if they were not Choice Scarf, they could go for a Draco Meteor. The Terra Steel would allow me to live that and then the Dragon Dance to outspeed because if they do switch moves, they're not Scarf. But at this point, Haxorus is looking quite scary. About to hax your head off with the axe on my head. And the Dragon Dance is going to be fantastic because now that base 147 attack is extremely scary. And also, we are faster than everything on the team. So, at this point, I do have Poison Jab coverage, mostly for fairies, but also turns out for kitty cats because I can go for that at the plus one. It is definitely going to take care of the Nascarada. And we are in a fantastic late game spot with the Haxorus. A lot of the time, this is kind of the role this Mon plays on the team. Kind of bides its time and waits for the opportunity to set up that Dragon Dance and then try to get a late game sweep. Uh, however, they do still have a Coma O left. And the good news is they do not have a Terra left because they did use it on the Flygon. However, they do have the priority Vacuum Wave, which does a bunch of damage. And uh, luckily for us, though, even though we're Steel type, we're able to take it fire off a nice little Dragon Claw, and that does finish off the Coma O, which is, again, one of the scarier Pokemon to play against. With Clangorous Soul, that thing can uh, easily, easily sweep stuff. So, uh, now we're in a spot where they're just trying to figure out if they have an answer for the Haxorus. They do decide to go into the Metagross here, and luckily this Haxorus has coverage for everything. I do have the Earthquake, and also the Terra Steel is going to come in extremely clutch, makes us resist that bullet punch. They are actually even Life Orb, so we probably would have died there if it were not for that Steel Terra. I can then go for that Earthquake, does finish off the Xbox 360 bitch ass, and Haxorus is out here cleaning up. Now the funny thing is, if that Flygon is Jolly and Choice Scarf, it does actually still outspeed me. Now the problem with it is, they probably don't see a kill with the Flamethrower unless I have the chip, but they go into their final Mon, it's gonna be the Flygon. It turns out it is actually Jolly with that Choice Scarf. So it's able to outspeed me. We're a couple of Axe Head homies, and uh, that is gonna take care of me. But not before the damage has been done. Haxorus absolutely hacks and holes in teams, and now I can just decide to go into whatever I want. I wanna go into Luxray, because the thing is, uh, extremely hard to pull off. Shout out to the Luxray video I posted the other day, but also uh, it's just fun to get this thing to have a kill. And also it is just stuck in a flamethrower, so I know that I can take an attack from this thing and try to land a Supercell Slam. So they do go for that flamethrower. Not going to do much to our little Luxray friend, and a Supercell Slam is going to send his ass right back to the Shadow Realm. So that's going to be the end of the game, and uh, I thought that was just an interesting match. Definitely some kind of uh, creative stuff going on, but regardless, it, uh, it was a pretty fun one. Now, you already know we're not gonna stop there because I do have one more and it actually is one of the crazier games for a couple different reasons and here's why. So if you guys are subscribers of the channel, you've probably seen my videos in which I use a very interesting strategy with Sticky Web and Court Change to bring it over to my side and pair that with Contrary Pokemon to give them a speed boost. Now, as I'm looking at this team preview, that looks like it is exactly what my opponent's working with. We see uh, the Araquanid, we see the Cinderace, and then there's two contrary Pokemon in the form of Malamar and Superior. So it looks like I'm going up against one of my own strategies, and this is going to be a little bit interesting to play against, because I've never played against it, only ever used it. So we're going to see how this plays out. 
So, of course, with this strategy that they're trying to pull off, it, it mostly works when the opponent doesn't know what's going to happen. Now, I have the benefit of the doubt knowing exactly what they're trying to do. However, it, it's kind of puts me in a spot where I don't really have the easiest way to stop it. So, I'm just going to do what I can and just mess around here. So, I know that they're going to lead off with the Araquanid because step one is to get up the Sticky Web. I can at least stop that with the Spore. I am faster than the uh, Spider Legs over here, so I can put his ass to sleep. And Daddy Long Legs is not going to be throwing any Sticky Webs around today. Well, at least for now, because while it is asleep, Smeargle is kind of in a bad position here where I don't want to use any of my moves. They all set up hazards, and setting up hazards on my opponent is going to result in them being switched over to my side with the court change later. So I decide one of the best ways that I can try to stop this is through my own setup, and I decide to use Umbreon here. I'm going to switch into the Umbreon, who uh, is defensive enough, plus with my Fairy Terra, I should be able to take anything Araquanid wants to throw at me, and I can potentially start to set this thing up. It's not all the time you see a fully offensive Umbreon, so I decide to take advantage of that. I'm going to go for the curse here, uh, as uh, of course they do stay asleep. So... Uh, at this point here, I know that while he does have the super effective bug bite, at least at plus one defense, I'm looking nice. And I decide to, I, I'm kind of <laughs> questioning whether or not I want to commit my Terra. Uh, because I know they're going to go for that sticky web if they do wake up. I set up a second curse here. I'm just cursing up a storm here, throwing profanities all over the damn place. And now we're at plus two. So they do wake up, which is unfortunate, but they are going to go ahead and get up that sticky web. Now, Another one way that I could stop this is with if I had hazard control. I do not on this team, so I'm going to have to kind of just deal with it. That's what makes this so difficult. If I had Rapid Spin or a Defog, it kind of just shuts this down immediately, and I do not. However, what I can do is decide to go for the Fairy Terra now. I know that they're definitely going to stay in here uh, and go for some type of super effective bug attack. And I can go ahead and combat that by putting the old heart on my head. It's Valentine's Day, bitch, and they go ahead and take a bite out of it. Of course, especially with plus two defense, it's not going to do anything. Now, I figure it's a nice time to start getting some damage, so I can chop him right in the throat, and it is going to do over half to the little fella. So even after leftovers, I'm looking pretty healthy with the Umbreon. Now, going ahead and committing that Terra early is a bit unfortunate, because they do probably have answers to it, but I just figure I might as well try to get Dumbreon doing some dumb shit. Anyway, now they go for the Liquidation. Which, of course, does do way more damage, especially with that water bubble boost. But at least now, I decide to go for that Terra Blast to try to cover for a switch. And that is going to take care of the Araquanid. So, while that thing is taken care of, it did kind of do its job. It, it set up the Sticky Web, and that's kind of the main thing that they are looking for. However, I'm feeling like I'm in a pretty decent spot here. Umbreon, you know, doesn't hit the hardest, but at least my attack and defense are doubled at this point. And we can see what we can get going here. Now, they decide to bring in the Comfey. Now, this is a Pokemon that the reason why it's on this team is because it generally does not care uh, about any speed. With its ability, it can use any attacks that uh, take health from you first. So they have priority with the Lead Seed. Things like Draining Kiss, Giga Drain are always all going to go first. And that's generally what this thing wants to do. So they do go for that Lead Seed there. Uh, and this allows me to go for the Terra Blast. It's going to do over half of this thing at least gonna be a nice little two hit KO except Umbreon being lead seated is not super ideal and uh, it's definitely gonna slowly whittle me down here and just make it uh, make it a whole lot more difficult for me to do my damn job at this point Comfey's is kind of a menace to my team so I'm like you know what I'm definitely not going anywhere my ass is staying in and if I can take care of the Comfey and have the match down to four mons left I'm really feeling like that does give me a bit of an advantage at least. This thing takes care of things like my Hitmonchan, Haxorus, and it's just kind of, it's a scary ass flower necklace. Doesn't look like it'd be a scary fella, but listen, Comfey has slept on his health. But they go for the Draining Kiss there, and luckily, however, a Terra Blast is in range to take care of it, and Umbreon is uh, at least at least doing what it's kind of supposed to. I am lead seated, but if they don't have anybody over there, it's not really going to mean shit. So, after Leftovers Recovery, I'm still looking pretty healthy. And keep in mind, this Umbreon is fully invested in HP, so even getting hit with special attacks, I'm, uh, I'm pretty damn bulky. So, at this point, now they decide to switch into Yanmega. And Yanmega is another extremely scary potential sweeper Pokemon, just because of the fact that a lot of the time, these are going to be working with a uh, Throat Spray kind of Bug Buzz set with the Speed Boost. Uh, I decide, knowing I can take at least one attack, a Throat Chop would be amazing, because... Throat Chop actually blocks sound moves for a few turns and it wouldn't be able to use a Bug Buzz. However, I do of course get flinched by an Air Slash, which is extremely annoying because this gives it a nice little turn uh, of the Leech Seed, also gives it a speed boost at this point. I'm like, well, I gotta just try to get some damage here if possible. And uh, the Air Slash actually leaves me with one HP, which is literally amazing. I can then go for that Throat Chop and 
while it does a huge amount of damage, I'm still thinking, is there, is there like a message that says it can't use sound moves? I swear there used to be, but uh, I'm thinking at least it can't bug buzz now, and the Leech Seed actually is going to finish me off. So theoretically, I believe that first turn that I used the Throat Chop counts as one of the two that this thing is unable to use sound-based moves. And as I'm looking at it, Yen Mega is faster than my entire team, especially with that second speed boost. But what I can do is decide to go into the Hisuian Electrode. I feel like it'd be hilarious if I bring this thing in and it can't click Bug Buzz against me because of that Throat Chop. So I bring in Triangle. I do, of course, get caught in the Sticky Web. However, with them unable to Bug Buzz here, I'm really hoping that they don't have this. They go for the Protect, which is going to definitely kind of ruin the, the whole thing here. And I probably, you know, should have not done this because uh, at this point, I, I definitely could have gone into something else. But I just wanted Electrode to be able to come in and flex on his ass. A little spherical and shit. But... Uh, with that Protect, now it's definitely free to Bug Buzz, and I'm like, well, I'm definitely not hard switching in anything here. They can then go for that Buzz, and uh, I don't know, that whole sequence, I probably should have not done that. It, it, triangle goes down, which is quite unfortunate because even with their Pokemon with Speed Boost, if I don't have the Sticky Web on my side, uh, the Electrode is still super quick. So, while that thing goes down, misplay on my end, but we adapt and we must overcome. So one way that I can get around this, as they do get their throat spray, this thing is like now a thousand speed and a special attack boost, which is very scary. However, I have a little painter guy and he's just here to just paint some pictures and shit. So what I can do is, knowing that I am focus sashed, I know that I can take an attack. They go for the air slash, which knocks me down to my sash. I'm thinking, please do not flinch. I do not want to lose to this Yan Mega. Luckily I do not flinch. And also I can go for that stone ax, four times super effective. And Smeargle is doing some shit that this thing never usually does. And that is uh, actually killing something. Now, I do set up my Stealth Rock in the process, which is kind of good for like a second. But then I'm like, ah, shit. This just opens the door for Cinderace to come in. And Cinderace, wearing his heavy duty boots, does not give a damn. And also is definitely going to bring the hazards over to my side and take the Sticky Web for them. And their strategy is coming to fruition here. So, they do go for that Court Change. Change into the normal type as well. And they take the Sticky Web. I take the Stealth Rock. And that's why it's unfortunate being forced to go for the Stone Axe there. Uh, it's just going to bring this Stealth Rock right to my side. So I can at least go for the Spore here. And their final two Pokemon are going to be the Malamar along with the Superior. Both of which are the Sweepers that do require the Sticky Web. And it's game time, baby. So I decide to switch into my Lotic, really hoping that they are either going to stay in or go into Malamar. Turns out... It is the wrong guy because they do go into the Superior. So while Superior comes in, Contrary Ability is going to give it a speed boost rather than a drop from the Sticky Web. And uh, the Double Switch is going to bring me into a matchup that isn't super ideal. Because I have myself a uh, fake-ass Gyarados. Gyaratrace is out here looking nice and scaly. However, I'm in a spot where I feel like I should be able to take one Leaf Storm. Now, of course, it is fast as hell. We're a couple of Serpent Fellas. Except I am barely able to hang on. And this is at least going to allow me to go for the super effective triple axle. And while it's not quite going to kill, I actually get a critical hit on the second one. We do hit all three, but it does not quite knock this thing out, which is quite unfortunate. Now, Superior is a massive threat. It has a speed boost. It has a special attack boost from the Leaf, Leaf Storm, and I'm just out here scared as hell. I don't have anything I can switch into here, but what I do at least have is priority on one Mon, which is going to be my Hitmonchan, who I really wish actually had Rapid Spin. I definitely would have uh, used that earlier to get rid of, the, rid of the webs if I did, but I don't, so we're just out here making whatever we can happen. So, uh, they finished me off with a Giga Drain, which is kind of just annoying because they get some health and some leftovers, and I'm like, well, at this point, all I can really do is go into the Hitmonchan. Priority is definitely one thing that shuts down this strategy, and a Mach Punch from a Life Orb boost should be able to knock out the Superior. So, I bring in Groot. I'm a guardian of the goddamn galaxy, and we do not care about no snakes. So, I can go for that Mach Punch there, and that is why the damage from Milotic was extremely important. Superior does get taken care of, and down goes likely the biggest threat. So, I take some uh, Life Orb chip. And at this point, they have one more scary mon in the back, and that is going to be the Malamar, who is a bit less scary because it's naturally slower already. But with a speed boost, depending on how this thing is built, it's going to be still pretty quick. So uh, I do get the benefit of knowing this thing's probably going to go for the superpower and knowing I can also take at least one of them. So they do go for that superpower there. Uh, it is going to knock me pretty low, gives them a defense boost and an attack boost, and they have a speed boost. And this squid is old squillium fancy sun scary as hell over here. But 
Uh, I do get to go for the Drain Punch just for a little bit of chip here to see what I can do. Uh, but again, with that defense boost, it's not going to do much. And before I go down, all I can really do is go for the Mock Punch. Actually get a critical hit and knock it really low, which is uh, quite lucky. Doesn't quite knock it out, so it doesn't really matter as this allows them to go for a second superpower. So that gives it another attack boost, another defense boost, and uh, the thing is looking quite sinister over there. But now it is time. They have two Pokemon left, and Haxorus is going to have to clutch it out because it is literally all I have left. So I am a jolly max speed Haxorus, and here's where we find an interesting situation on if this thing is also jolly and max speed, it is going to outspeed me with that boost. But what they don't know is that I'm the most clutch Haxorus ever. I do, in fact, outspeed, which means uh, they had like less than 200 EVs in speed and likely invested more in HP. And that is going to take care of the Malamar. And now the final Pokemon being a Sleeping Cinderace, Haxorus can go ahead and finish off the match for us. I call this dude the late game killer. Extremely clutch. Cinderace does have to stay asleep here and an Earthquake should be able to finish it off. So I thought that was just an extremely interesting dynamic of a game where uh, going up against a strategy like that that uh, I've been showcasing on my channel is de definitely still difficult. It can work. However, uh, yeah, that's going to come out as a win for us, and I thought that was just kind of a kind of a goofy match in, in general. But <laughs> surely Victor watches the channel. Victor, if you're out there, shout out to you. Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, definitely make sure to leave a like because it does really help out. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.